quilts and I'm back to talk a little bit about sewing machines I had an issue with my baby lock Elagio which is the main machine that I'm piecing on right now because my two singers were not working so I first want to say that the problem that I was having with my Elagio the thread kept breaking and I had a sensor that kept telling me that I had a thread somewhere but I had cleaned the machine and done numerous things so I bought that other singer sewing machine recently because I was going on a retreat earlier in the year and I needed a machine to piece on because my other two singers were inoperable so I have since then taken both of those singers to the shop and I'll talk about those later but I first just want to start with the Elagio and what the problem was with the Elagio. The Elagio really did have a thread stuck in it somewhere but all of the cleaning that I did I could not get it out and the reason why I'm making this video is because then we will normally take our machines to have it serviced and if you have any type of machine that's an embroidery unit as well you're going to pay over a hundred dollars for a service charge and all I had was just a string stuck somewhere so I did the thing that a lot of sewing machine shops tell us not to do but I feel that they do it anyway I actually use the dust off on my machine now this is what we normally get the Sullivan's dust remover for sewing machines but you can use any brand because other industries use this air this canned air as well so um, if you can find it cheaper in another department of your neighborhood stores either your Walmart stores or your home improvement stores then I would say go ahead and do that because you're going to get it cheaper everything marketed towards crafters quilters in specific is priced a, a lot higher than if you were going to get it for an actual machine shop so I just suggest you don't stick necessarily with one brand now the one thing you do need to monitor with this is because you do have a motherboard in a lot of these machines is that you don't want to spray towards the motherboard so I always spray to my left so I'm spraying so that any dust that I can't get out with my duster then I can it'll be sitting in the left side of the machine and not blowing back to the right up into my electronics area the other th main thing with can air is that we tend to shake them and you should not shake the can air you should just use it and do short spurts you don't want to shake it because you're going to agitate the water that's inside the can and you don't want the moisture inside of your machine. So I am going to just do a regular cleaning on my Elagio and I thought that I would just share that with you. And I don't know that I'm going to actually spray with the air spray because I'm not having any problems right now. It's not something that I need to do all the time but if I see something that I can't reach then I will use the can air. The other thing that I have that I have not used in a very, very long time and probably only used it once is this mini attachments for all vacuums. And let me just stop at the title because it says for all vacuums. Now I just recently updated to a Bissell and the attachment in here does not work on my Bissell. I had to actually go get my Oryx handheld back so that I can use this tool while I'm, I'm about to clean my machine. So, I bought this from Nancy's Notions years ago for $10, and I think it's still $10, but Nancy's Notion is currently having a sale, so they've got a lot, they've got it on sale, I think, for $6.99. So included is an attachment that hooks into your holes. Now, this used to fit on my old vac, 
but for some reason it's not fitting on my new Bissell so I just want to make you aware of that so I happen to have a handheld Oryx that I can use so let me get the cord down here so this is my Oryx and I can just slide this on now if it didn't fit it does have an adapter that will fit a smaller hole than the average size but this adapter as well did not fit on my Bissell so I will just put that into the bag then you have on the end of this holes which you're going to be using with your sewing machine you have little small attachments that go on here so that you can clean out your sewing machines or any small areas that you're having difficulty reaching so I have a straight end here and then I have one that has a about a 45 degree angle then I have one also that's a straight end so I can still add to this attachment it has a little slot so it gets a a lot narrower there and then they also included an oval brush and a round brush and they look something like that and these would also attach onto the end of the extended bar here so I'm going to go ahead and take my machine apart so that I can clean it and then I would just show you uh, the mini vac in action because I can't remember if it worked years ago I only used it once I don't know if I didn't use it again because it didn't work very well or if it was just cumbersome so I am going to take the open up this area and then I will come back so I am back and I have my machine uncovered and you probably can't see everything that's in here so I'll go ahead and unthread the machine and then I will take this foot off and I'm just going to raise this needle into the highest position I'm not going to take it off right now and it is very filthy dirty and I would just pull up some dirt just so you can see what's going on in here so this is some dirt here So I have a lot going on in here that needs to be cleaned out. So the first thing that I'm going to do since I have the attachment is I'm going to try that first to see what type of cleaning does it do. And I'm actually using the flat end attachment that I had previously attached. So you're going to hear some vacuum noise. And I also have my fan on overhead because I'm a little warm today. I did notice that this cord I'm going to pull it off so we can see it up close I just noticed as I was vacuuming that this cord 
says to turn to the left if it's a full size vac and then turn to the right for handheld vac so it's kind of written up here which is not showing in the camera right now it just won't focus so i did do that i do feel air in this area i, don't, I think it's supposed to be air in the area but i still covered it up anyway so it got a lot of the junk that was in there out so see if i can tilt you in a little bit the only place that i couldn't get was right behind my 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 hook my race in this particular area i couldn't get back up under here so i will do that with my little lint catcher and see if I can clean that out but right so I'm still getting even though I vacuumed I'm still getting some lint out of that area so it's not going to catch everything I think you could just skip this vacuum tool altogether since you've got to use it with something else and just manually clean your machine or just use the canned air. Now, I don't really need the canned air, but I just want to show you how to use the canned air. So I'm going to zoom out just a little. To my right is my actual machine computer so i don't want to spray air back into this area you always want to spray out towards the left end of your machine and like i said you don't want to shake these cans you just want to do little spurts and i did see some stuff flying out but i'm just spraying to the left and then i'm all done so it doesn't take a whole lot and I did get a few more pieces of lint out of there so that's done I'm going to actually oil this machine and then set it back up so for right now I am just going to cut this off and we're going to talk about my next machine I'm back with my next machine and this is my Sanger Quantum XL 1000 that I was having difficulty with stitching I actually took it to the place where I purchased my long arm machine because I had tried another dealer numerous times and could never get this machine to work. This was actually my piecing machine and I would use the Lagio and my Elisimo as dual embroidery machines and I could do double embroidery work. I could do one part on one machine and do another part on the other machine. But I had to remove it. The Elagio and use it for piecing when this machine stopped working. So I took it to the long arm dealer and I thought maybe they can assist me with this machine since I was having such bad luck. So I have not sewn with this machine. I have just attached it, cut it on, and I am just going to sew on some scraps and we're going to see what's going to happen with this machine here. So I have no idea. And this is the test sew out that I received from them showing that it was doing zigzag stitches and they had one of the decorative stitches. So let's just see what a straight stitch looks like. I'm going to just cut the thread so I've got thread pulling from somewhere Don't, okay <laughs> when I put my case on so this stitch looks pretty good actually looks perfect so let's just stitch a couple more seams
little louder, but it is making good stitches. So I am, I don't think that I can hold it so that you can see it because it wants to blur out. But this is the wrong side. And then the right side of the stitches. And on the wrong side I had those extra thread tails because I did not cut it off. But you can see this side really good. That's in and I've got the thread tails coming around on that side. Okay. So, look like I might be in business. I have a retreat in May, so I'm going to take this to that retreat in May. And I might do some other sewing on it as well before then. I actually have my stepdaughter that's coming over. She wants to start making quilts for her baby. So, I'll probably have her sew on this as well so she can give it a good run for its money. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is that Gamo advertised last week that they came out with the quick change feed system for the Gamo machine. So I called and had placed an order for my uh, attachment set. And I actually picked it up from the shop today as well. Uh, the cost of the kit is $199, so $200 for the kit. And I have not looked at this or done anything with it, but I'm sure I'll be able to use this in some upcoming videos. So I will just show you what I got. But I got in, included in here is a thread lock. Included is a thread locker. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this. I have never seen a thread locker before. So it looked like it's some kind of adhesive, like caulking or something. And I have some paperwork here showing me how to install the new hopping foot bar. Or the hop I don't know if you're considering it the hopper foot now since it's being changed but they got those instructions included and in a nice little bungee corded bag I have all of the feet and I don't know if I want to hold them all up but I got one two three four five six different things in here and one of these would have to be the new hopper bar because everything is being hooked onto that so i'd have to figure all of that out this look like it's the hopper bar because it has a little washer on top so that must be the one that i have to install first so I am looking forward to this. The reason why I actually wanted it was because I wanted to do some couching on the long arm. So I am very, very happy to have this set. So, so proud of Gamble for coming into the 21st century. I'm back with another machine. This is my Singer Quantrum CXL. It's a model that's older than my Singer XL1000. And... I was in the shop picking up my XL1000 and my Gamble parts and the technicians told me that they were having difficulty finding a ribbon band that they had contacted Singer and they no longer made the part. And I'm not sure exactly how old this model is as far as production but I actually purchased this machine in 2001. So they had been searching with their contacts and could not find the part. So I called the Singer dealership that I used to deal with because I know that they had old parts or old machines in their facility and so they sold me a ribbon band that I took back to the other shop and they fixed this machine so again I have not done any stitching on the machine 
I've just got it plugged in. I do need to get it threaded. And then they have a test print out here. On the front side, the zigzag looks really good, but not so much on the back. But this was the machine that was really off in a bad way that I had not sold on in years. So let me cut some thread here. So I can, and this machine I have not used in a very long time. So my needle threader isn't working and I did not know it wasn't working. I'm going to put the needle down just so I can do the first stitch manually before I just go jamming on a presser foot. And I'm just using my general purpose foot right now. The straight stitch looks very good. It sounds very good. So again, I think I may be able to use this machine again. see I am getting still a little bit of skip stitching in here where I've got thread knotting up but the front side looks very good so I'm going to have to investigate that and as I'm poking it I mean that's like a true stitch knot so let me try another piece of scrap and sometimes you may have to sew on them a little bit to get them working. Again, I think my thread, when I broke my thread, it pulled out. Okay. So this is the back side. It actually sold a lot better that time, so I have no knots. So I kind of figured that I was going to have to do a little bit more sewing on it to get it to kink out. And that ribbon band that they replaced is something that actually goes into the motherboard. So I may have to, you know, do some... It may take some adjusting because the main part of the machine was pulled apart as well. So... I am going to start sewing on both of these singers and figure out what's actually happening. I think I am in business again with both of these machines. I am going to sew on them again with my daughter-in-law. She's coming over this week as well. So they're going to get tested really well. And then I'm also going to take them on retreat, but I'm also going to take my Elagio. So when I go on retreat, I'm going to take both of the singers and the Elagio to make sure that I'm not without a machine. But I want to make sure that they have a good chance to be put through its paces so I can depend upon them again. Here is that when I bought my singers, I was with the singer dealer where I purchased them. And so I have been dealing with them for years, but... Sometimes, even though a business may not change hands, their service and the staffing will change. And I think what happened in my case is that the experts that used to work on singers, they started going to other manufacturers. It was actually a singer dealership that started getting into selling baby locks and 
Husqvarna Viking. So they started selling different brands of machines, not even sticking to one particular line. And then they even just, and they didn't even sell the Singer machines at all anymore, but they had two or three other brands that weren't necessarily under one umbrella. So I was trying to stay loyal to a brand and going to a shop that was named after that brand when it was no longer their specialty. So at that point, I needed to start looking elsewhere for service. So since I've had so much success with my gamble dealer, I just asked them if they worked on other machines and so found out that they did. And so I said, well, let me try sending my machines to them instead because if they can work on a gamble, they can most definitely work on these Singer machines and hopefully get them running. So at this point, they are both sewing, which has been a huge step over my last pickup of both of these machines where in a year, you know, when you take your machines in, you have like a year of follow-up. And in that year, I would take my machines in four or five times and they still wouldn't sew by the time I get my machines home. But they would say that they were sewing in the shop. So... I don't know what was going on, but I've gotten these machines home. They're both sewing correct. So I am really happy. And so I just think the moral of the story here is that sometimes you just need to take your machines to somebody else. And it's kind of difficult to hand your babies over to somebody else. So you need to make sure, you know, that you can trust them to do what needs to be done for your sewing machines. So I am really, really happy about the fact that they're both working now so I apologize for the length of this video but I had a lot of things that I was going over so I hope you understand and I will see you in my next video bye bye for now